On cue to a bear scare. A Billings woman shares her personal encounter as her eyes meet a grizzly near Red Lodge. Adrenaline kicked in, kicked in though, and I just did what I had to do to get to safety. Now FWP and the Forest Service looking to make sure it doesn't happen again. Plus a look at the issues inside the county jail. You get tired. I mean, it wears on people. We'll hear firsthand from a correctional officer who deals with the growing problems on a daily basis. And beautifying Billings. I've been doing parks and then um, different tourist attractions. A local man looking to bring magic city landmarks to life one brush stroke at a time. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. And good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Monday. I'm Andrea Lutz. And I'm Russ Riesinger. An aggressive grizzly bear wreaking havoc in the Red Lodge area. Yep, take a look at this video right here. It's pretty compelling and a little scary. That bear staring visitors down from across Greeno Lake, even fake charging in response. Now the Forest Service is considering taking action, temporarily closing down the area on the Beartooth Ranger District. Well, new tonight at 10, David J looks into the shutdown, telling us the story of one woman who came face to face with the bear. A Billings woman and her husband came across the bear while hiking in the area. She did not take pictures, and they strategically found a way to get out of there without having any contact with the bear. The bear came out of the woods looking for food near Greeno Lake, close to the Beartooth Highway. I could hear it breathe out of its nose, kind of like a grunting exhale, and that was terrifying. Ashley Richards and her husband had walked from the campground area to the lake, a favorite hiking place of theirs for many years. When I heard the rustling, I didn't know what it was immediately, but once I saw it take up the slope a little bit and saw it was this big brown creature, um, yeah, I knew right away what it was. <laughs> Someone else took this video taken from about the same area. I realized that I shouldn't be running because he might charge. So then I stopped and then he stopped and we just stared at each other. And then I walked backwards, slowly, as slow as I could. <laughs> and then I ran out of there as fast as I could. For safety, the road to the campground was closed on Monday and will remain so until the bear leaves the area. It's a boar grizzly and it seems to be foraging and it's showing defensive characteristics and it seemed to have drawn a crowd. Others hiking in the area told the Forest Service the actions they had witnessed. He could do a bluff charge or a true charge, standing up on his hind legs, letting out a warning growl. For the Richards, yeah, they luckily made it back to their car safely. North. Once I did get out of the bear's sight and I couldn't see him anymore, that's when I ran as fast as I could back to my car. And the encounter is a good reminder about being careful and prepared. Always make sure that you have your bear spray. It's good to travel in pairs or groups and make sure you're making noise. If you're backpacking, food storage is very important. If you come across a bear, you have to give it its space. Definitely give it its space. And if it is aggressive, you can report it to the Forest Service. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Nearly one year after last June's historic floods in southern Montana, a handful of roads have yet to be repaired. That includes the popular East Rosebud Road. Check out these new photos from the Custer Gallatin National Forest. This is what that road still looks like. Crews have started work on restoring access to the lake and the several dozen cabins that line its shores. Right now, the road remains closed to motorized traffic beyond Jimmy Joe Campground. And as you can see, it's going to take a lot of work to get the remaining three and a half mile stretch of the route repaired. That said, the Forest Service says that access will be restored within a couple of months. Some have braved that route on foot and the Forest Service is reminding hikers to stay at least 500 feet away from working equipment. A look with the Stockman Bank weather cam for this evening. Temperatures today pretty close to average for this time of the year, both for the high and the low. No new precipitation, but that's what we're going to be talking about here in a few minutes. Afternoon high temperatures, mainly in the 60s, 70 today for you in Sheridan and Miles City, 66 in Cody and Billing, 65 in Livingston. But as we get into the next few days, a shift in the weather pattern, especially Late Wednesday into Thursday, we'll start to pick up the potential for some heavier rain, especially across the eastern plains, and some thunderstorm activity to go along with that. Some of that rain will fall on the snow and cause increased melting there. It could cause some localized flooding. Details on the forecast coming up. 
From being understaffed to overcrowded, the Yellowstone County Jail continues to confront several pressing issues. This is the city urges county leaders to study the effects of building a new jail. Those challenges are taking a toll on corrections officers, many of them going above and beyond. Well, tonight our Charlie Claps has a firsthand look at what it's like working in an ever changing environment. It just so happens to be Correctional Officer Appreciation Week. It's a thankless job, and one that's certainly not easy here at the Yellowstone County Detention Facility, which is understaffed and completely full. You gotta have the passion for it, and if you have the passion for it, it's really okay. After 12 years of working as a correctional officer, FTO O'Fallon knows the ins and outs of working in a detention facility. For the most part, it's all about respect in here. And if you can talk with people and have a level of respect with them, they're going to you know, share that respect back with you. But one thing O'Fallon doesn't know is what will happen to the jail here in Yellowstone County. The jail is always full, so much so Billings police are forced to release people they arrest due to a lack of space. The city is also asking the county to pursue a study to build a new facility. This is a problem that's been out there for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, it's no secret, everybody's known about it. There's no doubt that it's impacting officer morale. They're not taking people to the jail that they think they should. The whole system does need to be looked at to make sure that it's running efficiently and effectively. That discussion is happening at a time when the jail is also severely understaffed, short 17 corrections officers, which means it's not unusual for officers like O'Fallon to work 16-hour shifts. You can run short-staffed as long as you've got that level of respect. Unfortunately, at the same time, one officer can only watch so many people at once. O'Fallon says the shortages begin with the recruitment process. Understandably, it's a career that can seem intimidating. I think that you know, that's just because people are oftentimes worried if they're going to be able to make it in this kind of an occupation. But despite an overcrowded jail and a depleted staff, O'Fallon is passionate about his work. It's a career he first became interested in because of his father. My dad was a sheriff's deputy in Great Falls for 40 years, so that kind of got me started into the whole thing, and I just kind of wanted to follow in my father's footsteps. And there's nothing O'Fallon loves more than witnessing people getting their life back on track. You're always going to have those success stories where, you know, somebody says, this is my last time here. It really was their last time here, you know. And those are the times that make you feel good. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. One bill that had overwhelming support from both sides of the aisle this legislative session is now up in the air after a late veto by Montana Governor Greg Gianforte. Senate Bill 442 passed with 85% of lawmakers in support. It would have used a share of marijuana tax revenues to help counties fund construction and repair rural roads, as well as increase funding for wildlife habitat and veterans services. The governor vetoed the bill, saying it was inappropriate to use state money for local roads. Lawmakers can override a veto with two-thirds vote while the legislature is still in session, but supporters of the bill say that veto came too late for it to be read into the record before the Senate adjourned. They want the Secretary of State to poll lawmakers by mail on whether to override it. A trailer stolen with the family's cats inside thankfully gets a happy ending. Yeah, but it also points to a bigger community problem of housing Montanans now that pandemic era rental assistance is faded out. MTN's Jackie Coffin takes a closer look. It's a sigh of relief for Shannon Nading and her son Blair after the camper he was living in and the two cats inside was found the day after it was stolen. Nading says it's the power of positivity at work when not a lot of other options are on the table. It's okay, little. It's okay. It was a tearful reunion for Shannon Nading after a very stressful 24 hours. We went to pick up my son at his camper yesterday morning. Um, we were going to get him some water and run a couple other errands and we came back to no camper. With a Facebook post shared far and wide that included pictures of the two beloved cats still inside, Shannon got a call that the camper and one cat were found off of 3rd Street. It was destroyed to begin with. It's mainly just shelter for him right now until better comes along, which it will. Shannon and her son Blair lost their apartment about six months ago and she found temporary housing at a local motel through the Montana Emergency Rental Assistance Program. A pandemic era program which most people are getting pushed off of as the funds dwindle out. 
It's hard out here. Everybody is, I mean, there's so many people. It's ridiculous. The program called Mira used more than $100 million of federal funds distributed by the state to help more than 13,000 Montana households during the pandemic. And as many like Nading now face an uncertain future, questions also still remain about how that Mira money was actually spent. Why there were people who were on for maybe half of the month and then not there anymore? Uh, where was this money going to? Was it being used? Properly. The concern that Billing State Legislator Mike Yakovich heard from community housing coordinators is the money was paid directly to hotels to house Mira recipients, but some hotels forced recipients to leave before their voucher expired and the funds weren't returned. So that led to the bill. A situation Shannon encountered too. They kicked everyone out early. We still had three weeks to go that the state paid for. I'm hopeful that not only will we'll be able to understand where the money went to, but where uh, allocation and where accountability takes place. But for now, Shannon and Blair are facing an uncertain future and still searching for their other cat, Tigger, who is still missing. And especially the one that called me to tell me that the cover's here. I can't thank him enough. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. One Magic City man is doing his part to beautify Billings one brush stroke at a time. Dan Granger moved to the city in 2018 and immediately started doing what he does best, painting. All of a sudden, his Paint the City project was born and he launched it this year. He's now using Billings landmarks as his motivation from Mystic Lake to the once checkered print water tower on the rims down to the Western Heritage Center and even the Moss Mansion. Granger has a goal of painting one Billings spot a month for a year. Go around to different places whenever I'm eating. I always have sketchbooks and I sit down and paint something. And so I started doing a lot of buildings. This project is one that it is getting interaction of people just seeing where it is, being able to click on the maps, like making you want to walk around and look at buildings. All right, you can check out his work at his downtown studio, Da Vinci's Workshop, or subscribe and receive stickers and cards with his artwork on it. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news on Q2, from yoga to book clubs, I'm going to take you to the Phoenix Recovery Community as they use personal experience to help heal others. And in sports, motivation through music will introduce you to one of the 10 finalists for Athlete of the Year. Stay with us.